Okie dokie, so I want to tell you one more thing about CSS variables before we close this series out and this is how we can interact with these CSS variables via the power of JavaScript. And this is essentially another benefit of CSS variables over SAS because again once we've transpiled SAS variables we can't really interact with those variables via JavaScript whereas we can with CSS variables. Okay, so let's dive into this. The example I want to go through is to create some kind of swatch strip at the top. So that means that we're going to have some different colored blocks and a user can click on one of these colored blocks to change the theme of the website. So for example, if they click on yellow, then this changes yellow and this changes yellow, etc. All right. So the first thing I'd like to do is create the very, very simple HTML for these swatches inside the header. So I've already copied this from our repo. I'm just going to paste it right in there. So dead simple. It's a div with a class of swatches and inside there's four different span tags and each of them have a style associated with them. They have a background color each. So the first one is this kind of charcoal gray. Um, the second one, in fact, I can't remember what these colors are. So we'll find out for ourselves in a minute. The next thing I'd like to do, however, is just add in a couple of different styles to style this swatch at the top. So again, I've already copied these from my Git repo and you can get those as well. I'm going to paste them down there and you can see swatches was the name of this class right here of the div. And then we're styling the spans in each, uh, sorry, each of the spans inside that swatches div. So each one will display as inline block. They're going to have a width and a height of 20 pixels. So little squares on the screen and they're all going to have a margin of 10 pixels to keep them away from each other. Cursor pointer just means that when I hover over them, it's going to have that little hand icon. So I know to click them. So let's save this and find out what color these swatches actually are. Okay, cool. So we can see the first one is black. The second one, that hex code refers to this kind of pinky salmon color. Then we have the blue, which is the banner currently, then a yellow mustard color. So the idea is that when we click on one of these, it updates the theme to be that color. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So how are we gonna do this? Well, first of all, we're gonna create some click events inside JavaScript. And when we click on one of these, it's gonna react to update that CSS variable. So let's create, first of all, that JavaScript file. If I right click and go to new file, I'm going to call this swatches.js. And then inside swatches.js, the first thing we want to do is grab a hold of these spans over here. OK, we want to store them in some kind of variable and attach a click event to them. So we'll say var and call this swatches and set it equal to document.querySelector and inside in fact, it needs to be query selector all because we're querying more than just one thing. There's four swatches in total and we want to return all of them. So we'll say we want to grab the swatches class, first of all, and then the span tags within that swatches class. OK, so that's going to return all of those swatch elements, all of those spans and store them inside this variable. Now, the next thing we want to do is grab a hold of the root selector. So inside our styles over here, we can see that our variables declared at the top are inside this root selector right here. We want to grab a hold of the root selector as well inside the JavaScript so that we can change it. OK, so we'll say var root is going to be equal to documents dot query selector. And then inside we want to grab the root element, which remember refers to 99 times out of 100, the HTML element, the HTML tag. All right, so we're grabbing a hold of that as well. So what we want to do now is cycle through each one of these swatches because there's four in total. And for each of those, add an event listener, a click event listener, so we can respond to it. So we'll say swatches, first of all, dot for each, which is going to cycle through those swatches. And inside here, we'll use a arrow function. So we just do the parenthesis first of all, then the arrow, then the code block. But each time around, each iteration through these swatches, we can take the individual swatch and pass it through as a parameter. So each time we cycle through these, we're getting access to that individual swatch, that span tag, and we can perform some kind of action on it. What we want to do is attach an event listener. So we'll say swatch.add event listener. 
and the event we want to listen for is a click event. If this is all going over your head, I know this is a CSS series and not a JavaScript one, feel free to check out my JavaScript DOM tutorial. That goes through all of this kind of stuff in great detail. So we're listening for a click event. Then we're going to fire a function when this click event occurs on that swatch. So again, we're using an arrow function. So equals and then the little chevron, then the code block. And again, we get access here to a parameter in the, inside this function, which is the event. So when we click on something, that event object comes through into this function right here, and we have access to it. So what we're going to do now is when a user clicks on a swatch, we want to take the swatch, find out the color of that, and we want to apply that color to the variable that's inside the root element. Does that make sense? So the way we're going to do this is by saying root, then the style property, that's going to give us access to the different styles inside that root element. So essentially these things right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set one of the properties, right? This is how we kind of override one of these uh, properties right here because they're all properties. We're just setting one of them, right? So set property. This is the function and this function allows us to pass in two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the property which we want to set. Now we want to set the variable property, which is double dash theme hyphen color. That's what we're overriding when we click on a swatch, right? Then we want to override it with the color of the swatch that we click on. So how do we get access to that? Well, like I said, we have this event right here. So we can say E dot target. That gets us the element that we've clicked on the target element. Then we can find out the style of that element, the current style of it. Remember, each one of these elements has a style right here and the background property is the swatch color. So we want to access that background property right here. So we say e dot target dot style dot background like so. OK, so now what we're doing is every time we click on a swatch, then we're taking that color, that style right there and we're overriding the theme color variable inside the root selector. OK, does that make sense? So now we've got our JavaScript. We need to actually make sure that our HTML is linking to that JavaScript file. So underneath the footer, I'll do a script tag and the source is going to be equal or rather. Yeah, that's right. So source is going to be equal to swatches .js. All right, let's get rid of that space. Save that and cross our fingers in hope that this works. So now if I click on yellow, then nothing happens. We're probably getting some kind of error. So let's just view that inside the console. Uncall error for echo is not a function. Of course, it's not a function. I've spelt it incorrectly. So this should be for each, not for echo. All right, then. So that's spelt correctly. Now let's refresh and hope that this works. So if I click on yellow, Voila, it changes the variable color. If I click on the red salmon color, it changes it again. Click on black, it changes it again, etc. So if we inspect this now, what we will see on the elements, if we go to the HTML, remember this is the root element that we're targeting in the CSS to apply our variables in. What's happening every time we click on one of these is that it's updating the theme color directly on this root element. OK, so. Therefore, it's overriding the theme. Does that make sense? Awesome. So there we go, my friends. That is CSS variables in a nutshell. There's loads more you can do with them. This is kind of like an introduction to them, if you like. But hopefully it's giving you enough information to go off on your own and start messing around with them to create some cool different things. So that's the end of the series. I hope you've learned something as you followed along. If you do like these videos, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like them. And I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial series.